We have lots of settings that can control the way that objects are selected in our Revit models. And while it's a slightly more advanced topic, we want to discuss it now because if you don't have these settings in their default state, then it can make it difficult to select certain elements as we move forward. So what I'm going to do right now is discuss each of the selection toggle settings that we have available to us, describe them briefly, and then in future movies, we'll look at them in more practical applications as appropriate. I'm in a level two floor plan here, and I've kind of created a situation where each of the selection toggles is represented. Now, this isn't necessarily always going to be the case. Now, there's a few elements here that we haven't talked about yet. We've got some grid elements over here, which we'll discuss in a future movie. We've got a Revit link model over here, which we'll discuss in a future movie. So a link model is just another Revit project that's been brought into the current project. And grids are just where the column locations are and so on. So you can also see that we've got this gray geometry here in the middle of the floor plan, and that's something called an underlay. So that kind of quite literally represents what you could do in hand drafting, where you put one sheet underneath the current sheet and used it for reference. Each of these types of objects has some special control over the way that we can select them. So you can actually isolate certain types of objects and prevent them from being selected in the model. So let's start with this linked element out here, which represents the site plan for our building. There's two places you can find the selection toggles. They're at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, represented by several little icons. And the other place is up on the ribbon directly beneath the Modify tool. And that's actually a small drop-down on the Modify panel. Now, the very first icon here is labeled Select Links. And we can see that over here as well with Select Links. And notice that there's a check mark next to this. This means that I should be able to click directly on the linked object, and it will, in fact, select. And you can see it highlights in that sort of blue color there. And then I could make manipulations to that object. Like, for example, I could move it. Now, it's probably not desirable to have somebody move the site plan. So what I'm going to do is click my Undo tool here to reverse that. And a way that we can easily prevent that from happening accidentally is by just simply turning off that Select Links option. Now, notice when I uncheck it here, a small little red X will appear on top of that icon at the bottom right-hand corner. So it works the same way. You could either toggle it there with the little icon, or you could check or uncheck it in the dropdown. They both do the same thing. And now notice that I'm not able to select this link file no matter what I do. So the main reason to bring it up early like this is if you're trying to select an object in your model and it's not working, then what that tells you is that you have one of the selection toggles toggled off where you should have it toggled on. So the next toggle over is underlay. So for example, this gray geometry that we see here, and I'm going to zoom in so that we can get a better look at it, that represents the floor plan down below. I'm actually on the second floor, but I'm seeing down below the restrooms and some of the offices on the floor plan below. Well, if I wanted to select those elements, currently I can't do that. Now, in a lot of cases, that might be desirable for underlays because you're just using it for reference. But if for some reason you did want to be able to select that geometry, then again, we can just simply toggle that feature there or here, select underlay elements. And now notice that these underlay elements highlight and are selectable, okay? So that's the underlay elements. I'm gonna to toggle that back off. The next one is pinned elements. Now a pinned element is something that you can personally do manually, okay? So for example, this wall right now is not pinned, but if I select this grid, it is pinned. You see this little push pin here? Now, the pin is used when you want to prevent an object from accidentally being moved. So notice that even though I can select this grid, I can't currently move it, okay? And that's because it's pinned. Now, if I unpinned it, then it can move. I'm gonna undo that with Control Z. But as long as it's pinned, here's the icon right here, it can't be moved. With the selection toggle, not only will it not be movable, but it won't be selectable as well. So as you can see, each of these toggles isolates certain groups of objects and prevents them from being selected. And the main reason for doing that is to prevent accidental modifications to your model. So as projects get more complicated and more complex, you're going to want to consider the condition of these various selection toggles. Now, what we want to do for now is make sure that we can select each of these items, and then we will toggle them off 
as necessary in the future movies. So on your own Revit, before continuing, make sure that you can select links, you can select underlays, and you can select pinned elements. And if you've got those three checked, then we'll be good to go moving forward.